Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do two example problems. Uh, for here's the first of two that we are going to do in this video. A 0.5 meter cubed rigid tank containing hydrogen at 20 degrees Celsius at 400 kPa is connected by a valve to another 0.5 meter cubed rigid tank that holds hydrogen at 50 C and 150 kPa. So let's go ahead and start off with a schematic. I have two tanks. Uh, connected by a valve, where both where both tanks contain hydrogen, where we'll call this tank A and we'll call this tank B, and the first state in tank A has a temperature of 20 C and a pressure of 400 kPa, and then the first state of tank B has a temperature of 50 C and a pressure of 150 kPa. Now the valve is opened and the system is allowed to reach equilibrium with its surroundings, which is at a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. So the, what happens is, is that this valve is open and the gases are, um, the, the hydrogen in both tanks are allowed to equilib uh, equilibrate until they become the same temperature as the ambient air determine the final pressure in the tank. So the final pressure in both tanks will be the same. We'll go ahead and list some assumptions. Uh, number one, we'll assume that H2 is an ideal gas. So hydrogen, we'll assume, is an ideal gas. And the second assumption is we'll assume that volume is constant. So now we have our assumptions and our schematic drawn. I'll just go ahead and kind of separate this out. We'll start with our analysis. So let, let's uh, get a few things clear here. First off, the total volume will be the volume of tank A plus the volume of tank B, right? Both tanks have a volume of a half a meter cubed. So the total volume is going to be one cubic meter. Also, the total mass of this system will equal the mass of tank A plus the mass of tank B. We'll call that capital A. Now, the thing is, we don't know what the masses are yet, but we know that no matter what happens, if I know the tank of mass A and tank B, mass B initially, they mix together, but the total mass of the system doesn't change. We count both to both tanks be part of the system. And also, if you go ahead and look at the back of your books, you'll find that the gas constant for hydrogen is 4.124, and the units for that would be kilopascal meter cubed per kilogram Kelvin. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to use this conservation of mass principle. All right, the conservation of mass meaning that mass, the total mass of the system is not changing, even though the initial mass in both tanks are mixing. Right. So the ideal gas law tells us that pressure times volume equals mass times gas, gas constant times temperature, right? So if I go ahead and solve for mass, which will equal pressure times volume over R times temperature, I can apply that to this. Um, I can substitute mass in for each of the cases here, right? So the, mat, the total mass will equal the final pressure right, the final pressure times the total volume of both tanks divided by the, the gas constant times the final temperature, which we know is 15 degrees because it says that the system mixes until it reaches the same temperature as ambient. That'll equal the pressure in tank A times the volume of tank A divided by the gas constant times the initial temperature of tank A plus the initial pressure of tank B times the volume of tank B divided by R times the initial temperature of tank B. All the R's cancel out, and then I'm left with this formula where the total volume, one cubic meter is known, the final temperature, which is 15 degrees Celsius in, um, so the final temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, right, plus 273, so that gives me 298 Kelvin. The temperature initially in tank A is 20 degrees Celsius plus 273 Kelvin, 
gives gives this to me in 293 Kelvin. I think I made a mistake. Actually, the tank, uh, the final temperature would not be 298. It would be 288. And then the initial temperature of tank B is 50 degrees C plus 273. And that would equal 200, um, 300, excuse me, 323 Kelvin. And I also know the initial pressure it's given me on both tanks, and I know the volume of both tanks. So the only unknown is the pressure at state two, which is what we're trying to compute, which ends up being 264 kilopascals. Now, there's some other ways you, you could have went ahead and instead of substituting all of those equations, you could have just solved for each mass individually, right? So again, the initial mass in tank A and tank B, that can be computed separately. And I've known um, in the past in teaching this class in the classroom, people have done it this way. So you would solve for the mass. You would get the mass, the initial mass of tank A. You get the initial mass of tank B. Right, and then compute the total mass as a combination of the two. And then you would go ahead and, sub and substitute that into the uh, ideal gas law for the whole system combined, which would be final pressure equaling the mass, total mass times the gas constant times temperature at state two, divided by the total volume. And again, of course, you get the same answer. Uh, the only difference between the two methods was that this one is a little bit more, a little more cal intermediate calculations, but they both get you the same result. All right, so that's the first example problem. Um, like I mentioned, there's two, so we'll go ahead and get to the second one. Um, this one's really interesting. So here we have water initially at a pressure of 300 kilopascals and an initial volume of 0.5 meters cubed per ki kilogram. And this is contained in a piston cylinder device, right? So it's telling me that I have a piston cylinder device. And I'll go ahead and, as I read through the problem, draw out a schematic, right? So it's in a piston cylinder device fitted with stops so that the water supports the weight of the piston and the force of the atmosphere. So here I have inside a tank with H2O, I have a piston. And then I have stops. So what's happening, it says that the water supports the weight of the piston. The water is heated, so I have some Q going into this. The water is heated until it reaches a saturated vapor and the piston rests against the stops. So the moment that it hits the stops, it becomes a saturated vapor. And then it is continued to be heated until the pressure reaches 600 kilopascals. So determine the temperature and the final state in degrees Celsius and also sketch the process on a PV at a TV diagram. So um, we'll go ahead and start this problem first with some assumptions, right? I think this uh, is interesting. This process occurs. What's happening is that as the water is heated, the piston is going to rise, and that's going to be a constant pressure process. But what happens is after it hits the stops, it turns into a constant volume process. So I actually have two processes going on which basically means that I'm going to have to separate this problem into three states, right? So I have this initial state, and then I have a second state that happens when the constant pressure process is over. So I have constant pressure until it hits the stops. Then, from the point it hits the stops until the heating concludes, that process is going to be constant volume or constant specific volume. So here I have for process one to two, constant pressure, and for process two to three, constant volume. So that kind of helps separate it out. Let's go ahead and enter in the properties that we know. The problem statement tells us that initially I have a pressure of 300 kilopascals and a specific volume of 0.5 meters cubed per kilogram. Now, a constant pressure, of course, the second state is going to have the same pressure at the first state. I don't have a second property directly at this point. 
But then the third state, I do know that my pressure also is given to me. It tells me it heating stops when I hit 600 kilopascals. So now what I have to do is, is just look at the processes um, and see if I can figure out a second pr um, property at each of these um, at each of these states. So the first state, um, the first state is telling me that I have a pressure of 300 kilopascals and a volume specific volume of 0.5 meters cubed. Then it's heated until it reaches a saturated vapor, right? So I already know a second thing, a second property, if you would, if you will, at this at um, state two. I know that saturated vapor or a quality of one. So whatever properties are going to be there are all going to be the saturated vapor properties because the problem statement tells me it is a saturated vapor. And then state three, we'll have to look it up. So let's start with state one, right? So if you go back to the book. Right, and you go to your saturation tables, the saturation tables for water. The pressure-based ones, right? So if you go back to your book to the pressure-based saturation tables, you go under 300 kilopascals, you're gonna have to look at where this property value lies. I wanna actually, take you guys through calculating the quality. Because if this is already starting at the state and being heated to a saturated vapor, I can only assume that this state is probably going to, state one is somewhere as a saturated liquid vapor mixture. So let's look that up. If you're going to go to the back of your books and you look up what the saturation, um, the vape, the specific volume for saturated vapor and the set and the set and the uh, specific volume for saturated liquid, you would find that for the saturated vapor, it is um, 0 0.6058, and that would be, of course, meters cubed per kilogram. <coughs> Excuse me. And then for the fluid, it's going to be 0 0.001073. Now, my actual specific volume of 0.5 has a value greater than that of the fluid and less than that of the gas. Therefore, it is a saturated vapor mixture. So if I were to go ahead and calculate the quality for state one, right, it would be the specific volume that I actually have at that state minus the specific volume of the, of the saturated liquid divided by the, the specific volume of the saturated gas minus the specific volume of the saturated liquid, right? I'll plug in my numbers, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.000173 divided by 0 0.6058 minus 0 0.001073 I would figure out that my specific volume, uh, sorry, my um, uh, my quality at state one would be 0.82. So that means that I have 82% gas and 18% fluid. Now, as that's heated up to state two, if I want to find my properties at state two, I would go to the same saturation table. Right, so I use the same one for state two. And my specific volume at state two equals the specific volume of the saturated gas because it is a saturated gas at the same saturation pressure. Okay, now let me re explain that one more time to make sure we're on the same page. State one, they give me pressure and specific volume. So I go to the back of the tables, to the saturation tables for water, the pressure-based saturation tables. I look under a pressure of 300 kilopascals. I go over to the specific volume values. I find that my specific volume of saturated gas at 300 kilopascal saturation pressure is 0 0.64058. And for the fluid, it's this number. This value, which is my actual specific volume, 0.5, is greater than the fluid and less than the gas. Therefore, it is a saturated liquid vapor mixture. From that, I can calculate my, my quality, just to confirm that, right, it's 82% quality. Then as the gas, as this is heated, 
it's hated at constant pressure. It goes, the quality increases, increases, increases as it becomes more vapor until I hit a saturated vapor, which is what the problem statement tells me it is. Once it hits, it stops. Pressure hasn't changed. Pressure has been constant. So I go back to the same saturation table under the same pressure value. I go over until I see a, the saturation gas specific volume. That is what my specific volume is at that state because it is a saturated gas. Then the as it, as it hits the stops, the pressure, I'm sorry, the, the heat continues to be added. And as the heat added now, the pressure is increasing, right? The pressure is increasing because now it's a constant volume. So if it's a constant volume, that means that the specific volume of state three has to equal the specific volume of state two, which is 0.6058. This now, if you go ahead to um, the saturation tables, right now, listen, if you go to the saturation tables for water, if you go to the saturation tables for water at a pressure of 600 kilopascals, this specific volume of state three of 0 0.6058 is greater than the specific volume of a saturated fluid at the pressure of 600 kilopascals. Therefore, it is a superheated vapor. Since it is a superheated vapor, since it's a superheated vapor now, I go to the superheated vapor tables. All right, go to the superheated vapor table. From the superheated vapor table, I go to a pressure of 600 kilopascals and find what temperature find what temperature this specific volume find at what temperature I get this specific volume and what you'll find is the temperature at state three is 517.8 degrees Celsius. I hope that makes sense. Just to review it one more time, state one, state one, I have a pressure and a temperature and, a, and a, a specific volume given to me. I go to the saturation table for a pressure based saturation table. At 300 kilopascals, I find that the specific volume value of 0.5 is greater than that of the fluid, but less than that of the gas specific volume of saturation. Therefore, it is a saturated liquid vapor mixture. I find my quality, right? And I find that the quality is 82%. I didn't have to find the quality, but I just did it for illustration effect. Now, it's heated at constant pressure until it hits the stops. So, and it tells me when it hits the stops, it is a saturated vapor. So, I go back to the same pressure entry at the same saturation table, I go over to the specific volume of the saturated vapor because it is a saturated vapor and I get my specific volume. Then as it's constant, as it's heated again, it's heated at constant volume because it hits the stops and this, and then the piston's not moving, but yet heat is still being added. So that means the specific volume of state three has to equal state two. And I find that the pressure has gone up to 600 kilopascals. Just to confirm what state I'm in, I go back to the saturation table pressure base, go to 600 kilopascals, and I find that this value, 0 0.6058 for specific volume, is higher than that of the saturated gas specific volume at 600 kilopascals. Therefore, that tells me that this is a superheated vapor. So in order to get my temperature, I go to the superheated vapor table, go to the 600 kilopascal entry, scroll down the values of um, specific volume until I hit this value, and then find the corresponding temperature, which is 517.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and finish off this problem. Uh, next part is asking us to draw out a uh, 
TV diagram, so temperature, y-axis, specific volume, x-axis. Here I get a saturation curve. I'm going to draw two pressure lines, lower pressure line and the upper pressure line. Right, I think this is at 600 kilopascals is the upper pressure line and the lower pressure line is 300 kilopascals. Now, I start off at the lower pressure line, state one, somewhere in the saturation curve as a saturated liquid vapor mixture. It's heated until it hits saturation as a saturated vapor, and then it's heated at constant volume until I hit a pressure of 600 kilopascals. Again, state one, saturated vapor, constant pressure heating until I hit state two, saturated vapor. So saturated liquid vapor mixture, constant pressure heating to saturated vapor, and then constant volume heating until I hit state two at 600 kilopascals, which is a superheated vapor. Now, the last part of the problem is asking you to draw the same processes on a PV diagram. So pressure, y-axis, specific volume, x-axis. Here I have my, sat my saturation curve. Now I have my temp two constant temperature lines I'm going to draw. If you remember, the constant temperature lines kind of go opposite to what a constant pressure line looks like on a TV diagram. Here I have the lower temperature at, um, I think if I go back to the problem here, if I were to find what the corresponding saturation temperature is, the 300 kilopascal pressure, I would find that the temperature at state one would be, um, I think it's 133.5 degrees. So with that said, lower temperature, 133.5 degrees Celsius, upper temperature line, which is the answer to the problem because it's asking for the temperature at the second state, 517.8 C. Again, I start off as a saturated liquid vapor mixture at the lower temperature. It is heated at constant pressure until I hit saturated vapor. So saturated liquid vapor mixture heated until saturated vapor and then constant volume heating until I hit state three at the upper temperature line, which is a superheated vapor. Okay, um, I hope that's clear. Those are the two example problems to finish up this chapter. So.